and welcome back to Art Laughs with me, Verity Babs. Today, I spoke to Bella Hull. I'm here today with Bella Hull. Bella, please introduce yourself. Hi, um, I'm Bella. I'm a stand-up comedian, I suppose. Um, yeah. <laughs> you have picked a lovely painting for us today uh, when yeah. you introduce that. Yeah, so I've picked Rosetta 2 by Jenny Savile. Um, it's actually a painting I, I don't know that much about. I've like really loved Jenny Savile for a really long time. Um, but I first saw this painting on a school trip in like year 10. So quite a long time ago now. And I just... There was something about it that I really liked, yeah. I know of Jenny Savile's work, but I don't know much about her. And is she mm-hmm. someone that you looked at a lot in your degree because you are a fellow art historian? I love using the term art historian. Like, I'm not, I I'm love using the term fellow art historian. <laughs> <Art> historian. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, a lot of my old tutors would find the idea of me calling myself an art historian sort of a bit sort of over-egging it in terms of uh, <laughs> my, uh, my attendance. But anyway... Yeah, I really like Jenny Savile. She, I don't know that much about her other than she's like one of the YBAs. Um, and she was doing a lot of work like in the 90s, I think, um, in the early 2000s. And I just really love her subject matter that she does. I love that it's kind of like female, but um, it's kind of abject and quite like gross, but also mm. quite beautiful. And I quite like that contrast I guess it's got this sort of feminine version of a sort of this Francis Bacon-esque thing where like all flesh is just like meat rather than like a physical yeah thing. was that so annoying to be like she's the female version of whoever it's like, yeah, no, no, she's no, just no. <laughs> but yeah no that's a really interesting point and like I it's so interesting because sometimes when people say that about an artist like all flesh is meat it's kind of like I feel like with Francis Bacon it's got a much more sinister undertone in terms of all flesh is meat and therefore it kind of has like existential overtones to it like it just feels quite I feel like it feels bleak whereas with Jenny Savile's work I always find the way that she like portrays flesh to be kind of celebratory of like the female form and also I I quite like that she uses stereotypically kind of unattractive models or like older women or whatever and it kind of just makes it feel like we're all we're all the same Mm -hmm. we're just you know bones and lard walking around yeah (laughs) well that's that thing of the the, like we said this, this abject so like taking the things that we normally like throughout art history the thing that people have loved to look at most is like female nudes and she takes Mm. that and sort of owns that Mm. and I had some interesting conversations with other comedians with work they've picked of like how comfortable we are with female nudes made by women as opposed to female nudes made by men and like obviously when you look through art history female nudes made by women are pretty hard to find because Mm. they're not allowed to but Mm. I don't know. I think I think I am just a lot more comfortable, regardless of the fact that Francis Bacon's works do look a lot more like, you know, any of them might have murdered each other during any of the process. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like I'm just a lot more comfortable with the fact that she's making these mm. portrayals of women. Yeah, me too. Um, I agree. And I also like that, like, it's sort of... Some of the work that she does is kind of women on like medical tables and stuff, like being prepped for surgery and that kind of thing. And yeah, there's something quite clinical about it, but also completely unclinical and messy and it's kind of aggressive. And it's like, there are so many themes in her work beyond the fact that it's a female nude. And I kind of like that because it's just so broadening. Um, this is so weird. I haven't like talked about art in such a long time. <laughs> Unearthing all of these like terms that I used to use just willy nilly. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Normally when I'm talking to the comedians, at least I can have some sort of semblance of being like the one who knows something, but not today. Mm. I'm, I'm so- <laughs> <laughs> but with uh, mentioning art history, what was it that drew you to not only like art generally, but about deciding that this is what you wanted to study? Loads of different things. So I, um, 
I always grew up kind of like I was quite coasted. I coasted at school for quite quite a long time, um, and I always was like quite good at English, quite good at art. Like I I really wanted to do an art foundation for quite a long time, um, and then I just. I, I think I did, like it was a mixture of combinations like I didn't I didn't like my English teacher so I didn't want to give her the satisfaction of doing English at uni <laughs> um and art history just seemed like a little bit edgier and I really cared about being cool so I just kind of took a risk and I did it for A-level as well um and yeah I mean I've always been like much more interesting interested in and good at like the more 20th century stuff um and like I had an overwhelming preference to do that at university um sometimes to my detriment but yeah I'm not very good at like historical facts <laughs> I have a, such a terrible memory um I'm better at like thoughts and feelings I think because <laughs> I have a lot and when you went to university did you find that actually the things you did pick were all like 20th century it's 21st yeah yeah definitely um I did Yeah, so in my first year I had to do, like, I didn't have any choice. And then in my second and third year, yeah, I did, like, abstract expressionism and very, very contemporary art, like, um, video art and that kind of stuff, um, which I I really enjoyed as well. Um, But not as much as, like, I think 20th century was kind of the sweet spot for me. And I also did surrealism as well. Um, which I enjoyed because it was like a bit more literary and there were lots of like novels and stuff to read. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed that a lot because I, yeah, I'm better with, with uh, gushy thoughts and feelings than like people were really good at, at uni, like knowing the chemicals in different paints and I Your just... dates of stuff that happened. Oh God, it? don't even, <laughs> I barely know the date I was born. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I just have no idea about anything. Well, it's interesting because I had the exact same thing of like when I was in sixth form, I was like, I'm going to go do art history, but I'm only interested in in 20th, 21st century stuff. Like if it happened before Hearst, I'm probably not interested. Like, Mm. you know, as far as I was concerned, like you say, like the YBAs and like Banksy, that was it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And everything else was sort of stiff shirted and boring. And then you're like three years later, I'm writing my dissertation about like Victorian invitation ephemera and I'm like what's really happened? what's happened oh, yeah, wow. so had, you really you got into it I did get into it I mean I didn't get into properly old stuff because mm. I mean I was always baffled by the people who chose like renaissance Italy and oh, stuff God. like that I, I still sort of viewed that as quite like <laughs> as a, like, a Tory option yeah 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 no, totally. I remember being in a lecture on like um Oh God, who knows what it was even about. The pre-Victorian like architecture. Mm. I just remember being there and I was so hungover and I, I genuinely count that lecture as like one of the worst moments of my life because I was <laughs> sitting there like, I do not even understand. I can't even begin to know what this is about. Mm. Nor the aspect, the idea that like everyone around me is super engaged and knows what they're doing. And I don't know, maybe it reflects really badly on me because I, I like only want to learn about stuff that I can kind of personally relate to my own life. So I can be like, oh, Jackson Pollock, yeah, masculinity. And then I can somehow like relate that to an ex-boyfriend that I hate. Um, but yeah, oh, when it get, the older it gets, the more I'm like, nah. That's the thing of like, I think there's a, also it gets to a point in art history where they're like, we know about this artist because of a book that was written many hundreds of years after his death. And it mentions the fact that he, you know, was abandoned as a child and was raised by an artist in the in the mountains and you're like yeah yeah but who was he shagging like <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 exactly I just want the juice mm. oh, I think also this is the thing is because it was so um commission based like in during the renaissance and stuff it's like people weren't just doing it for laughs they weren't just like producing stuff that they felt like doing I mean they were but I don't know I quite like the more emotional stuff jenny she gets across in her portraits this like so emotional and, like you look at this and it's very very intimate and this idea of intimacy is something she always does really really well and yeah I, what i want to know again is like this gossip of like okay yeah. who's the sitter how do they know each other i don't really know that much one of my one of my favorite paintings of jenny savills um that i had actually like on a 
on my bedroom wall for like five years was a portrait that she did of her daughter and it's like you would never really guess that it was her daughter because there's something very uh there's something very mature about it like it's I can't remember what the painting is called but it's again very fleshy quite like abject but also there's something very soft and rounded about it so it kind of makes sense like once you hear that they're related you're like oh okay and it I don't know whether it's helpful to like know those facts though, whether you just then start projecting your own mm. interpretations of what those facts mean, like onto the painting. Mm. Um, it's interesting. That, I don't know. Because that's a big like art historical debate that I know that in my degree, we never like stop going on about, about this idea of, you know, does the art speak for itself or is it really important that you know that Jenny Savile at the time was living with here doing this yeah, I know, like obviously, artists like Van Gogh, people wouldn't be fussed about if we didn't know any of his biography and this kind of thing. Yeah, um, it was like Gombrich says that thing about like there's no there's no there's no such thing as a history of art, only the history of artists. That's why we love celebrity culture. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and comedians, right? Like, do you feel like you have to share a lot of your personal self on stage in order to be endearing? A hundred percent. Yeah, totally. I think like also I'm quite self conscious about like the public mood towards like comedians right now which means that like it's very valuable to like be female and to have like an interesting story and stuff and like I I mean also like I I grew up very much on stand-up and I didn't really watch that much that many like sketches and Monty Python like I I got to uni and everyone like knew all those sketches off by heart and I just felt so out of my depth because I I'd grown up on like Spongebob and that was like comedy gold. That was like my God tier of comedy. Um, and that also is very interesting because I, what I thought was really good comedy was people oversharing about their life. Um, and what they thought was really good comedy was kind of very conceptual sketches that were very surreal and had nothing to do with mm. your life. And it wasn't until I like moved to London and properly indulged like doing stand-up that was very personal that I would have been way too scared to do at Cambridge um that I like finally I think I found my voice Mm. um because I just relaxed a bit in terms of like this doesn't need to be really clever this doesn't need to reference anything it can just be funny and that's good enough Mm. kind of thing that's the thing interesting thing with sketches is trying to write sketches that idea of like what things does everyone feel and think and what things are like everyday occurrences that we could make funny and it's like I don't know but I can tell you about this quite intimate occurrence yeah yeah yeah. I can mine it I think yeah I'm just not very good at situational comedy and I really really respect people that can do it I think it's it's just not a natural skill that I have did you do lots of sketch stuff at university yeah but they were all I think my problem with with university like when I was at university doing comedy was that I'm just like a complete charlatan in that I wrote some stuff when I first got to uni and then just kept on like bringing that out every time because I was like the people laugh they'll carry on laughing so keep on doing that whereas I think in order to be a comedian you like go home and rewrite and kind of sculpt um so so yeah it was much more of like a kind of Jackson Pollock approach yeah no totally I'm still wheeling out just jokes that I did in my first year of university um today so yeah that's the thing of like they were all solo sketches because I realized I just can't work with other people it's really (laughs) but at least I know you know at least I'm aware I do not want to work with other people Mm -hmm. Um, which meant I was a terrible member of any any kind of comedy society so I just I was exactly the same I was actually um one of my flatmates had a friend around the other day and she's like a teacher she's like doing teacher training and stuff and um and I said like, as a joke like oh uh, I could mean I could never be a teacher because I just don't think I care enough about other people and she was like oh, well at least you know that about yourself <laughs> <laughs> and I was like ah! I just felt Rude. really attacked <laughs> that's the thing of um, it's so interesting when people say stuff that you sort of know about yourself but you're like only I'm allowed to say that like, I was talking mm. to an artist recently and I was saying, you know, the thing with, with you know, people I work with is that the people who like me tend to like me quite a lot. And we do stuff together yeah. and it's great and I like them back. And the people who don't like me, I tend to also not like them back. So Yeah, you know, exactly. And she said, yeah, I can understand why people might not like you. You're very direct. And I was like, 
I know I've literally just said that, but how dare you? Yeah, no, no. It has to be, it's like a self-exposure thing. And this is also the difficult thing about like doing comedy about, because I, I have like the more kind of exposure or like success I've had as a comedian, the more I felt like really self-conscious of the stuff that I'm doing. Because I'm like, I don't know if I want like all of these people to know about this I think maybe I'm only happy doing it in like a really underground bunker that's got like 12 people in it kind of thing um and it's this weird thing where if you volunteer information then sometimes people come up to you after shows and be like oh I have that same situation or like oh what and they kind of probe you more and ask more questions about it and it's like no I only really wanted to expose like that that one aspect of it and like just because I did that bit on stage doesn't entitle you to like know the whole rest of the story you're off the clock now mm, like time's yeah, up book, exactly. it, book in another session and yeah. maybe <laughs> but and that's the thing of you know comedians and artists or, or musicians or, you know anything in celebrity culture like you know when a celebrity does something like fucks up and people are like they're supposed to be a role model how can they how could they have possibly done that you know well they're just a person doing their life but there is a, this assumption that anyone who puts stuff out in public has to expect to be torn to shreds by the public or to be involved in scandal or to have people judge the other bits of their life. So even if you're like, I'm a comedian talking about these three things on stage five times a week, Mm. the other things in your life shouldn't really be included in that list of things that people could then call you out about, but they are. Yeah, 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 totally. And you're kind of putting yourself on this thing of like, everything about me is public domain now and just have at it like in any way that you want kind of thing and that's that's kind of difficult I don't know I mean hopefully hopefully we'll never get famous enough to have that problem (laughs) I want to get just successful enough that I don't have to start paying back my um, my student loan (laughs) oh yeah yeah (laughs) that's that's the wage bracket we want to be in (laughs) neatly under that tax bracket yeah no totally it's a strange one as well because when you're like for more vocational degrees where you're like well yes but this will mean I'm a doctor so that I you know obviously I can pay this back whereas when you're like I'm going to do art history and maybe be a comedian like, this yeah is not, good luck <laughs> this is not a you know a life journey that was set up to me being able to make regular payments <laughs> yeah no totally and it's very regular and when you do get money it's like oh well I everyone should be really proud that I was able to earn money from comedy because nobody earns money from comedy so actually if you dare try and stop me from like going to Selfridges and buying some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks like you've got another thing coming kind of thing I'm very materialistic is something I also have realized recently I've only recently been started to like get paid and stuff for for doing gigs and like it comes it's not at all a monthly thing like you can do a gig and then three months later you'll get paid or someone will pay you a week later or like you just don't know Mm. And so it's so dangerous for me to be trigger happy with money because I don't know whether I need that money for rent or whether I can get eyelash extensions. Like it's just, you know, I don't want to have the most fluttery face in the world and then just like be living under a bridge. So (laughs) there are two options here. (laughs) Exactly. Bella, thank you so much for talking to me today. Could you let us know where the best place is to follow you and hear what you're up to? The best place to follow me, uh, controversially, it might even be Instagram. Uh, I think Instagram is controversial. I think that's that's the place to go. You think it's quite regular? I feel like comedians, I don't really want to advertise my Twitter because I haven't had a viral tweet in like maybe four years. Mm, And my idea of a viral tweet is like more than 10 people liking it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Yeah, my handle is at Bella Bella Hull or you can just type in Bella Hull and I'll probably come up somewhere. Thanks so much for watching. You can follow Bella in the ways written below. And as per usual, you can follow me at Verity Babs Art on Instagram. It'd be great if you give us a subscribe and I will see you next time.